UK swift populations have declined by 57% in the last 22 years that they've been monitored by BBS. And the trend has been pretty similar across all the countries of the UK. The reasons for this aren't entirely clear. We think that loss of nest sites through the modernization of houses and other buildings has been an important factor. It's possible that um, insect declines have also played a role, although we don't know enough yet about the most important insects and their population trends to be sure of that. But it's also possible that factors operating elsewhere in their annual cycle outside of the UK might be important. And it's worth noting in that respect that the swift and the cuckoo are two declining species that aren't advancing their arrival date back to the UK. So they may be having troubles on their migration. The results from our geolocator tracking have shown that swifts leave the UK around the beginning of the fourth week of July. They head down to Spain and they have a stopover quite wide ranging over Spain for about a week before they head southwards over the Sahara, hugging the western coast of Africa. They then move relatively rapidly straight away eastwards to the Congo Basin, the tropical forests of the Central African Basin, where they remain from about mid-August through until mid-November. And then most of the birds move southeastwards down to southern Africa, in particular Mozambique on the southeast coast. They spend the midwinter period there before around March time moving back to the southern part of the Congo Basin. And then in roughly mid-April, they move westwards rapidly to a stopover uh, in Liberia, where they stay for a couple of weeks before moving backwards through Morocco and Spain to arrive back in early May, back on the UK breeding grounds. work has involved a collaboration between 14 different institutions to allow us to track swifts from across the European part of the breeding grounds. We've learned a lot more and got a much more complete picture than we would have been able to do if we'd have worked independently about the migrations of swifts from Europe. And this has enabled us to get some real insights into the factors which are important in shaping these migration patterns. That in itself is really particularly special for swifts because they've got a really unusual lifestyle. They're in aerial insectivores that can spend 10 months on the wing when they're not breeding. And this has some real implications for the ecology and the migration patterns of the species. We found that the birds from Southern Europe arrived in tropical Africa about six weeks before birds that breed further north in Europe. By the time these later birds arrive, the birds from Southern Europe have already moved further south into Southern Africa, hence the term chain migration. Um, but the northern birds stay in the tropics. So we have a pattern where the most northerly birds are wintering to the north of the more southerly breeders. This contrasts with the pattern more usually found called leapfrog migration, where later birds arriving from the north will be forced to fly overfly the southern birds, which are already settled, and end up migrating um, to more southerly migration less destinations. So we have a winter pattern, which is the reverse, a mirror image of the breeding distribution. This unusual migration pattern is probably to do with the highly aerial lifestyle that swifts have. They have to move around all the time looking for insectivorous food, so they can't hold territories, which means they don't have any advantage to staying where they are where they're out competing later arriving birds. So instead they're free to move further south to Southern Africa and to exploit the resources here, which, has, which are more abundant later in the winter in Southern Africa than they are further north in the equatorial tropics. Most of the swifts that we've tracked from the UK are in the early arriving group, which moved down to Southern Africa, Mozambique particularly for our birds for the midwinter period. But unusually, and I think uniquely in the study, we also have a couple of birds which stayed in the equatorial tropics of the Congo Basin. So both strategies are represented, represented within the UK breeding population. There's quite a lot of information in the findings which allow us to get some sort of clues as to why the UK population may be declining. For instance, there's about five weeks variation across Europe in the timing of arrival back to the breeding grounds, but the very earliest breeding populations in Spain and Italy only arrive back about nine or 10 days earlier than UK birds. And this shows us that there's quite a lot of potential that our birds, um, because they're amongst the earliest birds, could be constrained in their arrival time by conditions back uh, in Liberia on spring migration. Also, knowing where our birds are throughout the annual cycle, 
gives us information that we can use to help determine the impacts of environmental conditions throughout the year on their productivity and survival. And thirdly, by knowing exactly where each population from across Europe spends different parts of the year, we can work out what the most important hotspots are, stopovers that are used by multiple populations. And in fact, we know that almost all of the Northern and Western European breeding population stops over in Liberia in spring before they cross the Sahara in a northward direction. So clearly this is an important uh, stopover and could be a hotspot for the conservation of European swifts. Thank you.